Hello Hunters, Salutations Scoobies, and Welcome Warriors. Those are the top three ways that I like how I could introduce these segments. Uh, we are doing Hunter the Reckoning. Uh, we are doing 5th edition, however, and I'm really excited about this because it is time for us to start deep diving into Hunter the way that we do with Vampire. And I'm talking the equivalents of level by levels and clan discussions and things like that. And the first thing that I want to do is go over, over a small overview on creeds because creeds are in comparison to vampire what we would consider clans or tribes and werewolves. But the more I think about it, the more I have to say that's completely wrong. That's not what they are. They're not comparable to clans. They're comparable to to predator types. They they hint at the kind of skills that these people might have. It's the way they hunt. Humans don't have a clan type. They're not going to. They're not going to have a tribe type. They're not going to have that. And I love the fact that they're not trying to overtake other systems, but they are matching systems when it comes to mechanics. And what I mean by that is in the old days, when I started playing Vampire the Masquerade, I discovered commonality between the different types of vampires versus the different types of everything else. And I'm not just talking about how, like, oh look, there's different types of mages, or oh look, there's different types of wraiths and werewolves. What I mean by that is, if you wanted to, you could say that the Gangrel were very much the werewolves of vampire society. You could definitely say that the uh, the Giovanni used to match up very well with wraiths, that the Tremere used to very well match up with, uh, with, with mage and stuff like that. Like, you had the central point of the wheel, and all the different spokes were the different clans that reached out to other different um, things in the world of darkness. And that's still relatively true. And I guess you could say that the Banu Hakim uh, could be the hunters of the Vampire the Masquerade world. But when we look at the way that V5 is organized, where there's clans and generation and things like that, like we always had, but we also now have what's known as a predator type, which is the way that a vampire is comfortable feeding which dictates a lot of different things it dictates what disciplines they might practice outside of the standard clan disciplines it dictates what kind of contacts they might have and in influence fields uh what merits uh flaws advantages that they might have taken up over time because of the way they feed because of the type of resonance they take in well in hunter it's not that different and instead of having a, an array of 13, like we have in, in Vampire for the most part, and I guess it's actually 14 now since the Tremere and the, the Tremere and the, and the, 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 the Salubri are both kind of represented in their own spot, we have five different creeds. And it does say at least five different creeds. So in further editions of Hunter, in, in player's guides and things like that, we might get more. But we do have five at the moment, and those will be the Entrepreneurial, the Faithful, the Inquisitive, the Martial, and the Underground. These are the different ways that hunters hunt. There are some that seem kind of, uh, duh. <laughs> there are some that seem kind of, uh, uh, common sense. The Faithful, the Martial, that sounds like something that you can pretty much guess what they are when you hear it. But when you when you break everything down, we'll just go ahead and start off. We have entrepreneurial. These are, uh, from what I've seen people give the best acknowledgement, the best uh, comparison to, these are going to be your Tony Starks, your Bruce Waynes. But it's not all about money. It's about innovation. It's about thinking of new ways of doing things. These aren't just your rich playboy philanthropist orphans that have decided to pick up arms against the night. These are also your MacGyvers. These are the guys that can be trapped by a vampire, reach into their pocket, pull out a, 
a, a toothpick, a rubber band, and a, and a paper clip and create a steak launcher that's going to uh, that's going to get them out of that situation. Now, obviously, it's not going to be that dramatic, but these are people who either know how to do things or they know people who know how to do things. You could actually make an entrepreneurial hunter who's willing to do favors and pay money and stuff like that because you happen to know someone who knows how to make or obtain these weapons. Uh, very similar to the concept of Blade, the Daywalker in Marvel Comics, who has Whistler. Uh, and Whistler knows how to make the weapons. Blade knows how to use the weapons. These are that, That's a very good example if you want to step outside of a supernatural fray and just see who they are. But these are the individuals who have the gadgets and have the the sense of innovation to how to put those against what they're fighting against. Then we have the faithful. Um, faithful are the ones who just, they, they completely run off on belief. They, they, they go on faith. And it doesn't have to be Christianity. It can be anything. You can have your priest who runs around with their cross and holds it out and forces them back with the power of their own faith. But you could also have the late night owner of an occult shop who clutches tight to her pinnacle and forces the, the, the darkness back uh, to bring the light of the goddess into view. You can have that bearded biker who reaches around his neck and grabs the hammer of Thor to keep the Jotnar and the 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 Onheriar back uh, from from taking the night from them. This is any religion that you can think of. This is any faith that you can think of that are going to be the people who tend to have more more likely to have what we would consider a supernatural edge, and we will definitely go over edges. Uh, in fact, that's one of the cool things about these is where clans and tribes have specific powers that tend to go with them. There are edges, the powers, the disciplines of the hunters that although they're more likely to show up under different creeds, they're not 100% necessary. You can be an entrepreneurial who runs on faith. You can be a faithful who makes weapons like there there's so many open ways to to put this puzzle together the way that you want it to run the game in your fashion after faithful we have inquisitive which is probably one of my absolute favorite hunters these are people who try to accumulate knowledge and employ it in hunting they might not even be trying to kill things they might just be trying to gain information and how fun would it be to play a game where everybody just decided that we're all going to make inquisitives and we're going to build our own form of arcanum group the the people who just want to sit back and and document everything it's it's pretty cool it's it, the fact that you're able to do that kind of thing is possible and it's also just fun it's it's fun that you're not just all trying to run around and kill things, which is technically the big point of this game. Then we have the marshals. The marshals are the people who believe that the best way to get things done is to shove a stake in the vampire's heart, to shove a silver bullet into the brain of a, of a werewolf, to clip the wings of that fairy, and to, to douse the Wicked Witch of the West with water. These are the people who want to go out there and swing their blades and shoot their guns. That is a marshal. And then, of course, we have the underground, which is something that I just hadn't considered, is the human who uses guile and subterfuge to get the information that they need, to set the creatures of the night up for failure. That's awesome. That's really cool. Now, let's go ahead and read what the book says about creeds specifically. And uh, we'll see what my opinion that I just said uh, if it matches or if I'm just completely wrong. At least five creeds of hunters exist tonight, though they have no formal limit to how many there might actually be. Creeds don't have a particular origin story. They're 
emergent, given rise as the world saw need for them. The individual hunters were willing to take up the cause. I love the fact that this is a group of people who just notice that stuff is not right. In the old Hunter the Reckoning, we had humans getting imbued with the sight brought to them by some supernatural force that when they that when the rest of the world saw rioting, they saw zombies running through the streets. That when a vampire was around, instead of seeing some suave businessman who's making outlandish commands and having them work, they saw that desiccated corpse with glowing red eyes and fangs. Like, they saw the classic vampire. There was just something about them that was supernatural that took a lot of the fun away from it for me. And now that... It's just these are people who are not being fooled. These are people who are not letting the wool being pulled over their eyes. That's what makes Hunter fun for me. So under the entrepreneurial, it says, Hunter takes on their quarry with bold innovations and experimental approaches. I think that pretty much fits what I was saying. These are people who are not going to fit in the standard box of what you would consider the Tony Starks and the, the Bruce Waynes and stuff like that. But like... Uh, that, that, that could very well fit in the concept of the Punisher and things like that. These are the people who, who are, are, are willing to take the time to build the traps. The faithful are hunters. They operate with the belief in higher powers and the divinely informed worldview. So these are people who cannot be shut down from what's going around them because their faith will not allow it. Um, maybe these are uh, humans who worked high into the church and were able to get a hold of a copy of the Book of Nod or Revelations of the Dark Mother or something like that that had been confiscated. And it's opened their eyes to a whole new worldview of the dangers out there that need to be stopped. Protect the flock. Inquisitives are hunters that accumulate and employ knowledge against the occult using both cutting edge and ancient methods to study and learn about monsters and what they do. Yeah, these are people who are using the security systems that are built in around the city to try to track what's going on. I love the fact that these guys are trying to figure out as much as possible and they're digging through dusty tomes but they're also getting on websites where they think human trafficking might be a thing that are actually like monsters that are using the dark web to like find victims and things like that the inquisitives are fun i really love them uh the martial hunters reason that hammering down the supernatural threat requires a devotion to arms and tactics go out there and beat the crap out of stuff I, I like it. It's a very short-sighted war worldview, but like seriously, you need your warriors. I, I really see the difference between the martial and the inquisitive being the difference between, for those of you who are fans of the Supernatural series, the martial being hunters and the inquisitives being the men of letters and how when they work together, they get the most accomplished. And then, like I said, the underground are hunters that have learned that guile, subterfuge, and knowing the right people can gain one access to the quarry they seek. So, when you are trying to, you know, line the pockets of a local politician because you're trying to get closer to them because you found out they might be a ghoul who's working for some venture uptown, there are so many different things that you can do. And like I said... There is no direct, you get specific benefits, you get specific um, edges or anything like that for playing these uh, creeds. So, like I said, they're not necessarily clans. They match very well with predator types, though, in my opinion. Other than that, I would just like to say that there are things called a cell. And a cell is your effectively coterie. This is your group of people who have come together to create a network of underground, marshals, faithfuls, inquisitives, entrepreneurial. They're the people who are pooling their resources together to create a group that is more sturdy against the night than a single individual. Somebody who has contacts in the police department who can make sure that they're not going to get in trouble if they break into such and such house because they think it might be a nest. 
these cells, um, and for those of you who know, I can't stand the word cellies, but that's what you call people who are in your cell. It's a it's a really neat it's an it's a neat concept um, that they 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 have here. But that's how this game works. It works in groups. When you're playing a game of Vampire the Masquerade, you have your coterie. When you're playing a game of Werewolf the Apocalypse, you have your you have your uh, you have your pack. Mage has their covens. Like there's there is always going to be some representation of group dynamic in the world of darkness games because it's about working together in one fashion or another you can also play that psychopath who decides that he's going to use your group as bait i've run a hunter game in the past it wasn't hunter the reckoning it was old blue book uh second edition revised um hunter and i had that we had that guy who decided that he was going to use his his own teammates to to try to lure out a vampire they were hunting, and uh, it never goes good for those people in the end. But sometimes playing the bad guy is a lot of fun. So this is like I would say my first real big foray into a lore dump when it comes to Hunter the Reckoning, and I hope everybody's enjoying these videos because I'm really really enjoying running them. I really like the fact that I've started this whole Our World of Darkness thing where I'm running out and running games for people and like going going out and, and meeting gamers who are really interested in running these things and the fact that I'm not just running Vampire anymore, that I also have Hunter the Reckoning and soon we'll have Werewolf and like hopefully a host of others. But running Hunter the Reckoning is just a lot of fun and... I can't wait to see what kind of stories I get to run with it now that I'm considering this like a job. So, <laughs> um, for those of you who have a favorite creed, let me know what your favorite creed is and do you consider this more of clan or predator type? I'm very interested. Obviously they're trying to use it in a way so that it it, it mirrors the concept of clan, but the way that it tends to work, in my opinion at least, is predator type. So, I am Voivode Maquette. Thank you for joining me in this look of Hunters for Reckoning and its creeds. And I will see you next time as we take a deep dive into the entrepreneurial hunter. May the sun keep rising.